What's up guys and welcome back to a brand new video today here on Codename Pizza and more importantly welcome finally to the full Blood of the Dead solo players easter egg guide. Now I have optimized this entire easter egg for solo players so if you've got nobody to play with this is the video that you guys need to watch. You can run this with a team and feel free to do that. Every single step that I've optimized works on solo and on co-op but it definitely makes the whole easter egg so much easier for those solo players. And the even cooler thing about this easter egg guide that I've made for you guys today is the fact that all the other guides are wrong. There's multiple steps on other guides out there. Since Treyarch have changed steps, the new steps will be included in this video. And the more important thing is, even the first step of the Easter egg that everyone thought that you had to be between round 15 and 18 for, we can now do it even sooner. As long as you optimize your game, you could be easily start in the main quest between rounds 5 and 10, which is really, really cool. So this guide took me so long to create, so just make sure that if you do want to support the channel and you want to say thank Thank you. Just absolutely smash that like button right now. If we could get 3,115 likes on this video, that'd be absolutely amazing. And if you guys are brand new to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button to become the latest member of the Pizza Club. Make sure after you've completed this as well to leave down in the comments section saying that you managed to do it because of this guide. And also message me on Twitter at Codename Pizza, letting me know over there as well. But with that all out of the way, let's jump in to the full solo Easter egg guide to Blood of the Dead on Black. Ops for zombies. So before we even jump into the map itself, let's have a look at the setup that you guys want to run. So you guys know me and setups. I want to make sure these Easter egg guides are accessible for everyone. All you've got to do is rank up for some of the things. It's not like you've got to spend real life money to get the items that I need you to use. So all the elixirs I'm going to be using will be classic elixirs. So the first elixir I advise you guys to use is anywhere but here. Basically, if you get trapped or surrounded by zombies at any point, pop this elixir and it will instantly teleport you somewhere else to a safe location. It's it's definitely a big lifesaver inside of this easter egg so place on anywhere but here after this i'm going to use temporal gift temporal gift doubles the amount of time that any drop can be on the map for you'll definitely need this for easter egg steps don't just put it on because you think you can maximize the amount of time that you'll get double points for that is very very effective but there's easter egg steps in this guide that will require you to put on temporal gift so make sure you've got that on the next one i use is burn out just like the nine guide i didn't really use it inside of this run and i didn't really know what else to put inside of that slot so you feel free to put whatever you want in that slot. I use burned out just in case I get trapped. I can instantly put it on and zombies will turn into flames if they hit me. And the final one that I put on inside of this is stock option. Now stock option basically allows you to take all of your bullets from your stock instead of from your clip. Basically meaning that if you've got a really good weapon like an RPG or something, it doesn't have to take ages to reload. But once again, that isn't really necessary for this run. I've just got it there for convenience. Now moving on to our starting weapon. I always start out with the strife. I really like that pistol, but it all comes down to your own personal preference. I would advise you guys to rank up your strife until you've got the bayonet knife on there and attach that. It's going to make it so much easier to run over the catwalk at the start of this game. Now moving on to grenades. Any grenade will do, but of course you guys know I really like the wraith fires. They're really effective and they can kill zombies on super high rounds. And for our specialist, we're going to be using the katana. Now the reason why I'm using the katana is because the katana can kill and it can also go into in plain sight mode. So all the zombies will ignore you while this is active. And this is actually really good for a lot of the Easter steps that we're going to be looking at. So definitely use that katana. And finally, let's look at perks. Inside of my brew slot, I have got myself stamina up. It just means that you can run a little bit quicker and it makes the game flow a little bit nicer as well. Inside of my cola slot, I've got dying wish because every time it reloads, that gives you an extra life. It's a complete lifesaver and you will not lose any downs inside of this game. Inside of my soda slot, I've got quick revive because if you get hit, you regen your health a little bit quicker. And inside of my tonic, this is the most important. Once again, if you guys watch the nine Easter egg guide, make sure you put on victorious tortoise this thing is an absolute lifesaver if you've got your shield out you cannot go down you will not take any hits with the shield out and with this easter egg you basically need your shield for every single step so this is a complete lifesaver make sure you put this perk on that is all of our setup to get into blood of the dead so now that you're ready hop into the game now there's two train places that i want you to learn before you actually get into this easter egg if you guys don't know what training is is basically where you get loads of zombies together in a big crowd, make them follow you, and then kill them all in one spot. It makes it so much easier to pass through these rounds because there are certain steps of this Easter egg that require you to go to the next round. So I've found two really nice train places that I've been using that will
will not get you downed at all. The first train place that we're going to call train place A is over near the spawn. You're basically doing a full loop down the stairs through the new industries building, back up past the catwalk and back down the stairs again. Just keep on training up on that loop and you will not get down. I promise you. It's so easy to train around that area. The second one is if you are inside of the prison, you're going to be training around the cafeteria and then back up into this corner, drop the magma gap and then run back around once all the zombies are attached to it. It's really, really simple for that train spot as well. And there are two train spots that you guys need to know. One for new industries and one for the prison. Okay, now you guys have got the setup and the train spots down. Let's jump into all the steps of this Easter egg. Okay, so as soon as you spawn inside of the game, stay inside of the spawn area and kill every single zombie on round one, except from one. Save one zombie and then you'll have enough points to leave the spawn room and go and make your way down the stairs through this gate right here. As soon as you go down the gate, make your way over to the left-hand side and go and turn on that power switch. Once the power switch is on, go back up the stairs and open up the catwalk. This is where your strife pistol with the bayonet is going to come into play. Just melee all of these zombies, which are going to be a one knife kill with this bayonet, and you'll be able to make your way all the way through the catwalk. When running across the catwalk, make sure that you either shoot the Brutus that spawns in near the prison or shoot some of his dogs. This will now allow the Brutus to spawn in when you actually get into the prison. It's just an easier strategy how to get a Brutus to spawn in earlier. If you ever get stuck at any time near the end, you should have your katana ready, but you should be absolutely fine as long as you've got that strive weapon. Also, if you get stuck, just use a wraith grenade and you'll be absolutely fine. So your mission is to basically get to the prison on round one. Now that you're inside the prison, you are going to go and find an electrical box. There is three electrical boxes inside of the map that have this essence on that you need to collect. The first one is inside of the library. The second one is outside of the cafeteria. And the third one is going to be over outside the warden's office. Go and pick that up and you are good to go. Also, because you were running across the catwalk before and you either shot at the dogs or shot at the Brutus, the Brutus that was there will now be spawned into the map. Just kill that Brutus and he will drop a key. Pick up that key and that's the second part to your shield. Now that you've got that, you are going to have enough cash to actually go and make your way down through the stairs all the way down to the bottom floor to turn on the second power switch. Go and turn that power switch on, another Brutus will spawn in and kill that second Brutus. Now you need your final piece of the shield, which could either be next to this wall right here on the stairs, it could either be on the bottom floor outside this locked up doorway, or it could be round the corner in front of this window right here. So now that you've got all your shield pieces, you'd probably be a little bit strapped for cash. So flip the round, kill the final zombie, and this will spawn in a dog round. That's right, a dog round on round two, and that is because you made it to the prison on round one. So at this point, just kill all the dogs and then start round three. You should now have enough points to go and build your shield on the buildable table at the top floor of the prison next to where Electric Cherry used to be. Go make your way over there, build a shield, and you've now got the shield. Congratulations. I first advise you guys to get the Hell's Retriever. Hell's Retriever is super, super simple to do. You've got these three locations around the map. You've got one inside of New Industries. You've got one on the lower level where you just place that shield down. And the final one is going to be outside of the Warden's house. To get the dogs to spawn in, just get a kill next to them and then fill them up with six souls each. The dogs will disappear, then make your way into the Warden's house where you can now use the fast travel and you'll be able to pick up the Hell's Retriever under the ground. When you fly past it, hold down the action button and you'll instantly get it. It's as simple as that. So now that you've got the Hell's Retriever, let's go and work on the Golden Spork. So the entire Golden Spork upgrade isn't necessary in this Easter egg quest, but you will at least need the spoon portion of it. So if you want to follow this guide and just get the spoon and then move on to the next step, that's completely fine. But I totally advise you guys to follow all the steps that I do, get the entire Golden Spork, do the entire side quest for that, because it will help you if you get cornered by a load of zombies. If you get cornered, then this will save your life because one melee attack will instantly kill that zombie that has you cornered. And especially because you are playing solo, it's something that you really do need. If you're playing as a team, maybe just get the spoon, but definitely follow these next few steps to get the entire spork if you are playing solo. So first things first, make your way to the warden's office and then bring out your shield and look at these pillars. When you bring the shield out, you'll be able to look through the shield and see three numbers on these pillars. Note down the numbers and at this point, collect six zombie souls with the shield. Bring out the key, collect six souls, and then make your way down to where you can input the numbers in the old mob of the dead. Once you get there, shield blast the number panel and you'll be able to input the numbers that you just got on those pillars. Once you do this and make your way down to the docks, shield blast this electrical box and the net will move above your head. Throw your hell's retriever that you just got at that net and you'll see a spoon and an arm drop onto this crate below. Pick up that spoon and then you've got the silver spoon. Make your way up to the top floor and place that silver spoon inside of the bathtub near the roof and now we need to go and get yourself a blunder gas. So if you haven't already got one out of the mystery box, let's go and do the blunder gap easter egg it's super super
super simple. Considering you're already on the roof, let's start there. Go up to the roof area and throw your house retriever at this box right here. You will then see a skull attached to the house retriever and you've got one skull. Your next job is to go and find another four. Make your way over to near the old spawn location where you'll be able to find another skull inside of this cell right here. Then make your way over to the new spawn location where you'll find another skull on these set of stairs. Then make your way over to the docks where you're going to throw your house retriever at this wood on the dock right here where you're going to find another skull. And then finally make your way over to the warden's office where you can throw your house retriever at the top of this pylon and then you've collected five and a blundergat will spawn on the table of this office. Pick up the blundergat and then make your way into the warden's house. Once you're inside of the warden's house, place the blundergat inside of the fire. Make sure you've got quite a few zombies on the round and then pull out your specialist weapon and get a load of kills with the specialist weapon. Now you don't need the specialist weapon for this step, but obviously this is a solo guide to make it easier for you guys. You can use any weapon, but the specialist weapon is the most easy to get these kills with. When you get a kill in this room, you'll see them drop blue smoke. Run into the blue smoke and that will be part of the essence. You are filling up the essence in the fireplace. You'll then hear a specific noise after you picked up a certain amount of essence. Make your way back to the fireplace, hold down square X or F depending on what console you are on and that will add the essence to the blundergat. Pick up the blundergat and that is now a tempered magma gat. Your job is now to run all the way back to the new industries building near the new spawn location while keeping this tempered. So you see the blue smoke around it, there's going to be barrels along the way that you guys are going to run into that also has this blue smoke. So simply just run the route that I am running right now. Your first barrel is going to be outside of the warden's office. You're also going to get another blue barrel on Michigan Avenue. Your next blue barrel is going to be outside of the catwalk. Your next one is actually going to be on the catwalk. You're going to have another one at the bottom of the catwalk. And then finally one outside of the new industries building. Then once you're into the new industries building, go and place it inside of this machine right here. Give it around five seconds and you'll finally have the magma gat right there. At this point, make your way back to the roof, collect three zombie souls and shock this box to bring Pack-a-Punch in. At this point of the game, you should have a decent amount of points, so Pack-a-Punch that Magma Gap, do around one to two rounds on that roof using that Magma Gap, and then that should give you enough kills to go and fill the bathtub, which has the spoon in right now. Go down to the bathtub, drain the blood, and make your way back to the catwalk. Throw your Elves Retriever at the bottom of the water tower, and you've now got the Golden Spork. So now that you've got the Golden Spork, your next job is to go and get the upgraded shield. Now this is super, super simple, so don't worry about it. As long as you've got the regular shield, you can do this. Make your way over to the mystery box and keep on flipping the mystery box until you finally get the lock inside of that mystery box which is basically a teddy bear. The box would then move but as soon as you see that lock have your shield out already and attach yourself to the lock by using the key on the shield by using R2. You'll then see the lock start draining and the lock will turn to blue. As soon as you see that lock turn to blue you need to throw your hell's retriever at that lock. You'll see the lock attached to the hell's retriever and then that means you've got the upgraded shield. The reason why you need the upgraded shield is because it can hold four spirit blasts instead of two and you definitely need this for the easter egg so make sure you do this okay so now that you've got the upgraded shield you are ready to go onto the main easter egg quest but i want you to do one more thing before you get there i want you at this point to go and get monkey bombs and the reason why i want you to get monkey bombs is because that is the brand new method of how to start this easter egg quest on an earlier round to get monkey bombs obviously you could hit the mystery box or you can guarantee them by doing the next easter egg step make your way over to the monkey bomb statue just outside of the line library area and at this point back yourself up into the corner and make sure you have got a level two or three katana. Get zombie kills around there and you'll see the souls from the zombies fly into the monkey bomb. As soon as the monkey bomb has got a orange circle on its head, shoot it once and it will float up into the air. Make your way back to the original spawn location inside of Blood of the Dead where the monkey bombs will now be waiting for you on the table. At this point also think about secondary weapons. The secondary weapon that I love inside of this game is the Mog 12 shotgun. This upgrades into such a good shotgun. And the better thing is, it's part of that training route A that I showed you guys before. So you can buy ammo as you run past it. So make sure you get that, upgrade it, and that's gonna be a lifesaver for most of these challenges. So now that you've got your secondary and the monkey bombs, get some spirit blasts inside of your shield. Then make your way down to the number dial where you can go and type in 666. This will spawn a Brutus into the map. Your job now is to take that Brutus over to the warden's house and make your way to the top of the stairs where you are going to melee this wallpaper with the spoon or the golden spore. You'll notice that that will now rip the wallpaper and now make your way to the bottom of the stairs and throw a monkey bomb at the top next to the back wall. You'll see the warden go up and break that monkey bomb. When he breaks the monkey bomb, the wall will knock down and you have officially opened up the warden's house on an even earlier round than we thought was possible. This is such a good method. At this point, it really doesn't matter how many zombies you've got because as soon as you 
flip this switch right here, all the zombies will die out anyway. So it's really no big deal. You'll see the cloth float up into the air, the wall will break, the roof will break, and they'll all get sucked into a portal. Look on the table behind you where you'll now see an orange orb. Pick up that orb and then make your way back to the original spawn room for Blood of the Dead. Once you get over there, place the orb on this map right here. And then if you look to your right hand side, you'll be able to interact with the Cronorium that is on the floor. Interact with the Cronorium, it will float up into the air and a seagull will come out of that book. Watch the seagull fly off into the distance and once the seagull disappears, you will then be able to go and find him around the map. Now this seagull can spawn in multiple locations and I'm going to be showing you guys every single location that this seagull can spawn in on. Once you finally do find the seagull, all you've got to do is pull out your shield and spirit blast the seagull. You guys are going to have to repeat this exact step three times and you can only do it once per round. So you can find him in the top floor of the spawn area where you originally spawned into Blood of the Dead. You can find him on this truck right outside the room as well. I'm sure there's a location inside of the new industries somewhere around here. I know there's one on the pipes next to the new industries inside of this tunnel right here. There's one inside the first power location on these pipes right here. There's one on the top of the catwalk. There's also one on this pillar inside the recreation yard. There's one inside of the library. There's one next to where the old electric cherry used to be. There's one on the top floor just outside of the bathtub room right here. There's one on the roof around this area right here. I've seen one inside of the cafeteria right here. There's one outside of the cafeteria on this ledge. There's a location that can be on top of the washing machine inside of the showers. There's one outside of the showers area in this corner right here. There's one on the top of the pipes next to where the old double tap used to be. There's one at the top of that staircase on this platform. One straight inside of the warden's office above the door right here. One in the mystery box room inside the warden's office right here. One on top of the fireplace outside of the warden's office. There can be one on top of this light outside of the warden's office. You can get one near the monkey bomb statue which is near the dog spawn location. You can get one above the number pad inside of the citadel tunnels. You can also get one to the right hand side of that number pad right here. You can get one on the staircase right next to this window near the second power. You can get one on top of this generator inside of the second power generator room. You can get one near the old jug machine location and you can finally get one right next to the docks. Now this is more locations than I've seen anywhere else and these are all the locations that I have found. So go to all of those locations. You'll be able to hear the seagull around them. You'll see it with your spirit shield and then blast that seagull. In between rounds, keep on filling up your shield. Get more shield health by going buying a new shield. Once you've got three of those seagulls, flip over to the next round where you are now going to go and check all of those same locations, but you won't see the seagull. If you look at all of those locations with your shield, you will hear the warden laugh in a specific location. Only one of the locations you'll hear the warden laugh and you'll be able to see this flash right here that you guys can see on my screen. That indicates that the seagull is there on this round, but you can't see him. At this point, you need to go and get zombie blood and this is where your temporal gift that I told you guys to put on in your elixirs will come into play. So save a couple of zombies on this round, go and spirit shield the number box and type in the numbers 8 Seven, two. Once you type that in, you'll notice that a zombie blood will spawn it in in front of the number box. Now pop your temporal gift. This will allow you to have one full minute in zombie blood instead of 30 seconds. So run into the zombie blood now you've popped it and now make your way over to the location where you found the spark or the warden's laugh through your shield. You'll now be able to see the bird through your shield because you're in zombie blood mode. Put away your shield, bring out your hell's retriever and throw the hell's retriever at the bird location. If done correctly, the bird will drop a cranorium and you'll see the Cronorium at your feet. Pick up the Cronorium and now you can make your way over to the Warden's house where you can place the Cronorium on the body that's on the electric chair. Once again, because you're about to go on to another step, make sure that you have filled up your shield to full capacity so you've got four Spirit Blasts in there and a full shield health. You'll now notice that the pages on the Cronorium will now start flipping. Hold the action button on the bunk, so either square on PlayStation, X on Xbox or F on PC and the book will stop flipping. Bring out your shield and look through the shield and you'll notice that is a three digit number. Now, quite often, this will not render in. You'll have to give it a few seconds. So, because you don't want to get trapped in there, just try and run around a little bit. Try and train, try and save a zombie. But if you want to try and do this mid round, that's fine. If you want to be crazy like me, look at the book as long as the numbers have rendered in. Note down those numbers and then use anywhere but here as your elixir to exit that room. Once you are exited that room and once you know the numbers that were on the book, make your way over to the number input pad where you are now going to once again spirit blast that box and type in the numbers that you saw on the book. This is going to start one of five challenges. Now the challenges can spawn in to five locations around the map. So I'm going to show you guys where
where these locations are. The first one that you guys might get is next to the docks right here. The next one that you guys also might get is on Michigan Avenue outside of the warden's office. Another one that you guys could get is inside of the shower location in the corner of the room next to the shock box. Another one that you guys could get is inside of the new industries building. And finally, another challenge that you guys could get is inside of the first power switch room where the pack-a-punch can spawn in. So once you've inputted those numbers, an orb that you can only see inside of your spirit shield will spawn in in one of those five locations. Your job is to go and find exactly which one it spawned in at and go over and shock it with your spirit shield. Once again, because you've just had to use the spirit shield on the box and also the orb, make sure you keep on collecting souls from the zombies using the key and making sure your spirit shield is at full capacity. You want to make sure that you've got four spirit blasts available at all time through this entire Easter egg. So it's completely random what order you get these challenges in. So right now, I'm just going to talk you through how to do every single one. So first off, let's talk about the one that is inside of the second power switch location, which is where the Pack-a-Punch can spawn in. Once you make your way over to that room, you're going to have to pull out your spirit shield and shock that orb. Once you've done that, you want to try and save one zombie. Now you guys see in my gameplay right here, I do not save a zombie. I am a complete idiot at this point, but I don't go down. I just wanted to do this to prove that you don't need to save one zombie to do this, but because I'm advising you guys how to do this very easily, make sure you only save one zombie. And if you want to make this easier for yourself, make sure that you've got level three katana. You can use your in plain sight, or you can also make your way back over to that numbers pad, shock it, type in 872, where you can get another zombie blood. Once again, if you are doing the zombie blood thing, make sure you pop your temporal gift, and then you'll get double the amount of time. So make your way down to this room right here with the engines in there. Make your way over to the engine on the right, where you can now hold down the action button. So square on PlayStation, X on Xbox, or F on PC, and this will start the challenge. In this challenge, you are going to be playing Simon's says. So you're going to be looking at these boxes around the room to see which one lights up. Now it's good to get yourself familiarized with this room before you go on to the step. Every single box that has got a piece of paper on it can be part of the Simon Says game. So once you've activated that generator, one box will light up. Once it's lit up, go and make your way over to that box and light it up as well. You've now completed one of five out of the games of Simon Says. Every single game of Simon Says automatically starts after each other and they add an extra box on every single one. So you guys see right there i just did one which is the first one the next game will have two which will automatically start so it'll be two light boxes the next one is three the next one is four and finally the final light switch game will have five boxes that you need to remember now the easiest way to remember these is give them numbers write them down on a piece of paper and give each box a number before it starts so on your piece of paper you've got numbers wrote down of which box is which and then when it lights up just tick on the piece of paper that that lit up first and then you'll know the order 100 every single time and because you're playing solo you can pause whenever you want so it makes it so much easier okay so now you're making your way through all of these simon says games and once you finally finish the final one which has five in there three light boxes instantly will light up you need to make a note of where these three light switches are as long as you make a note of which light switches light up you'll be able to complete this step so now you need to make your way over to the three boxes that did light up at the end look at the pieces of paper on those boxes and they will have symbols on these are going to be your symbols so either draw Draw these symbols down or take a picture of these symbols. A lot of the symbols look very similar, so make sure you are being 100% accurate with this. So I totally advise you guys just bring out your phone and take a picture of each symbol on those boxes. You only need the symbols of the boxes that lit up at the end. The three boxes that light up after your fifth Simon Says game. Once you've got those symbols, make your way over to this little ledge right here where you'll be able to pick up a punch card. Now make your way back to the original spawn location of Blood of the Dead, where on the upstairs of that room, you can now place the punch card into this machine. This will now light up monitors inside of this room. Your job is to match the symbols on the monitors with the symbols that you wrote down from the boxes that lit up in that room before. So once you found one of the monitors that have got a symbol that matches yours, hold the action button down on it and it will change the symbol. Write down the new symbol that it shows. You need to do this for all three of the symbols that you got on those boxes. So you should now have three new symbols from the television screens or the monitors inside of that upstairs spawn room. Once you've got those three new symbols make your way into the first power room where you originally shocked the new orb that spawned in for this challenge. You'll notice that there is now a ghost inside of that room going around the power switch and you'll notice every now and again he will stop and he stops at specific levers.
Levers. If you look at the levers, they also have pieces of paper next to them, and you need to find the piece of paper that matches the symbols from that upstairs of the spawn room. Once you find the exact lever that matches your symbol, you need to wait until the ghost is walking from the last symbol towards your symbol. So make sure he is on the way to the symbol that you have. He's got to be walking from the last one to yours. And on that route, shield blast him. You need to do this for all three of your symbols. And when you complete that, the step is finished. Now, this is one of the steps that changed from the original guides. Originally, Treyarch made it where you would shock him when he is exactly on the symbol that you have. But now you need to do it when he is on the way to that symbol. So in between the wrong symbol and the one that you have. And he's got to be walking towards the one that you have. Now, once you've done that, an orange orb will drop down where the ghost was and you have completed that challenge. Now, that is probably the most difficult challenge. So considering you've got that out of the way, you are looking good. Okay, at this point, you don't actually have to flip rounds. You can make your way back over to the Cronorium inside of the Warden's house where the pages are now flipping again. Go and interact with the book and once again, look at the book with your shield. If the numbers don't render properly, just run out of the room, give it a few seconds and then go and check them again. Once again, if you've got a train of zombies behind you, once you know the numbers, just use anywhere but here and get out of that room ASAP. Go over to the number box, spirit shock the box, and then type in the numbers on the new Cronorium. Another orb will spawn in, and another one of the locations that I showed you guys before. So the next one I'm going to be showing you guys right now is the Docks Challenge. Now, everyone thought that this would be impossible solo, but I have come up with a method to make this almost so easy that you will do this in your sleep. So if you do get this challenge, make your way over to the Docks. You'll see the orb through your shield and shock that orb. Now at this point, try and save one zombie. It's going to help out a lot, trust me. And zombie blood's going to help out a lot with this as well. So once again, pop temporal gift, get the zombie blood. And if that runs out, make sure that you've got a full shield and even a full specialist as well. Your job is to make your way into the warden's office. And inside of this room right here, you'll notice that there is a Morse code machine that you can now interact with. Now the Morse code will be different every single game, but it's quite easy to tell if you are doing it right or you are doing it wrong. So the way you do this step is going over to the Morse code machine and hold down the action button on there for either one second or three seconds. If you hold it down for one second, it will class it as a short. If you hold it down for three seconds, it will class the input as a long. Your goal is to find out the correct order that you need to type these in it. So I would advise you guys to type 872 into the dial box, get yourself a zombie blood with temporal gift and make your way up to this Morse code machine. Hold it down for a second. If the warden doesn't laugh, that is a correct input. And then just put a dot onto a piece of paper just to symbolize that you have done a short. Then I advise you guys to interact with it and do a long for three seconds. If the warden laughs, the next input is not going to be a long. So once again, if you got two dots, write down two dots on your piece of paper. Keep on building this up until the warden laughs and then restart and do the exact same thing, but then switch out the final one. It's all trial and error, but as long as you stay on the same round, the order cannot change. If you get two shorts and then a long, and then you do another short and the warden laughs, do two shorts, a long, and then a long, and then just keep on going like that. Normally for me, I get around eight and then it will complete, but there is one trick to this that makes it so much easier than any other guide out there. And once again, this all comes down to my buddy, the new perk, Victorious Tortoise. Get yourself a full shield and get yourself Victorious Tortoise. You cannot be hurt as long as you've got a shield out. So, use your zombie blood. If the zombie blood runs out while you are attempting this step, bring out your katana, which is going to give you in plain sight for 30 seconds. If that runs out, bring out your shield and you'll probably have around 30 seconds to a minute with no zombies bothering you at all because they cannot hurt you because your shield is out. So once again, it's all trial and error, but you will get it in the end and you'll know you've done it because your character will say a quote like, oh, we've done it or something along those lines. Once you've inputted all that correctly, make your way up to the infirmary on the top floor of the prison. Go next to this medical table right here where you can now kill a zombie next to. If done correctly, look down your shield and you will see a spirit inside of that room. Shock the spirit, then walk over to the spirit and interact with that spirit using either Square on PlayStation, X on Xbox or F on PC. You now need to start getting soul kills and each zombie kill represents this spirit to walk probably around five to 10 meters. So you really don't need that many kills to move him that much. The spirit will follow wherever you go and your job is to get him down to the docks. Now, as long as at this point, you've got yourself your specialist weapon, you should be absolutely fine with this. It's not that difficult. The easiest way to do this is take
take him across the top floor, get him over to the gondola, take him down in the gondola, down the steps, and then finally into the portal. Once he gets into the portal, he'll drop an orb and you guys will have finished that step. Now that you've finished that step, once again, bring out your shield, make sure that you've got four full blasts ready in that shield, and then move on to the next challenge. The next one I'm going to be showing you guys is inside of the showers. Now the shower one is probably the easiest challenge, so this is really, really fun to do. Go over to the corner of the showers, the orb might be there for you guys, and then spirit blast the orb. Once you've done that, you'll notice that a spirit will spawn in next to the orb, and he will start playing the banjo. Now he'll play this banjo for around a minute, and once he's finished, you are then able to go and pick up that banjo. Now I don't know if it's pure coincidence that when he was playing the banjo in my game, I interacted with him and he stopped playing the banjo and then gave me the banjo a little bit earlier, but I might be completely wrong. But as long as you let him play his song out or interact with him, he will give you the banjo. Pick up that banjo and then there will be a blue circle that spawns inside of the shower room. Your job is to go over to that blue circle and get kills while standing in the blue circle. You do not need to let the zombies get inside the circle. You can kill them from anywhere in that room as long as you are stood in that circle. The souls from the zombies will start filling up the banjo and once you've completed the step correctly, the blue circle will disappear and you'll hear a banjo sound. If the blue circle disappears and you don't hear a banjo sound, look around the room and there might be another blue circle. Fill that up and just do it again. Once you hear the banjo sound, make your way back over to that spirit where you can give him the banjo, let him play another song for around a minute and he will drop another orb. Pick up that orb and you have completed that step correctly. So now that you've completed those three, you have now got two challenges left inside of this map. Once again, between challenges, make sure that you are filling up your shield to full capacity so you've got four shocks. And the next one I'm going to be showing you guys inside of this game is going to be the one inside of the new industries building. Now the new industries building challenge has by far got the worst reputation out of all the challenges inside of this easter egg. But I'm going to be showing you guys the easiest way to do this solo. So at this point you need to have all spirit blasts. So obviously to start this challenge you make your way over to the warden's house, you interact with the book, get the new numbers, tie them into the number thing and then of course you've got to shock the portal inside of the new industries building as well. So that's going to take you down to two shield blasts. You need to kill zombies with your shield and make sure that you've got four. At this point, it is so crucial that you have a full shield. Now, before you start this challenge, one thing that you could do, which would make this so much easier, is just have a good look around the map and try and find a red box, which is sparking. If you find one of the red boxes, which is sparking, that means that it will fill your shield up fully, but don't do it yet. If you find one that sparks, you have basically been given the best luck in the world and it'll make this step so much easier, but don't do it yet. If you can't find a box that's sparking, don't worry, I've got another strategy for you guys as well. So make sure your shield health is completely full, make your way over to the old spawn room of Mob of the Dead, and kill a zombie inside of that room. You should now notice a spirit spawn into that room, and I should also note that try and just save two zombies. When you get into that room, kill one of the zombies which will spawn in the spirit, and then you've only got one zombie left on that round. Now that you've shot the spirit, you'll be able to use your key from your shield on that spirit. Now as soon as he is in the map after that spirit blast, pull out your key, and shock him until he disappears again. As soon as he disappears, shock him again and do the exact same thing. You'll notice more times that you do this, he is turning redder and redder. Now, you know inside of your shield, you can store four spirit blasts. And right now, you know you are blasting the spirit and using your key on him. So your shield blasts are obviously going down. And the more you do this, he gets redder. But to get him completely red and spawned into the map, you need to get five spirit blasts. So do two of them, then make your way and get another shield, do another two of them, them, get another shield and now go and find that red box I told you guys to find before and that will then fill you up to four do one more and he will be completely red if you don't have a spirit box do the four inside of the prison make your way over to the cafeteria where you are going to fast travel over to the spawn area once you are there get a load of zombies together and get yourself another blast wait around the catwalk area where eventually you will see a floating spoon go past you that is your spirit go and shock him with the kills that you just got from outside of the spawn and then get him with the key and that will be your fifth and final one to make him completely red and in the map at all times. Once he makes his way into the new industries building, turn on the trap and you'll notice the trap kills him. He'll drop an orb, pick up the orb and you have completed that step. This step is not difficult at all as long as you do exactly what I say. But there you go. That is that challenge completed. You have got one challenge left, which is going to be the Michigan Avenue challenge. Now I find this challenge probably the most difficult one on solo. So one thing I would advise you guys to go and get is monkey bombs. You actually do don't need the Hell's Retriever at any point of this Easter egg after this, so go and get yourself some monkey bombs. I find this escort step so much easier when we have monkey bombs instead of the Hell's Retriever, but because we actually did the Easter egg to get the free monkey bombs before, we kind of left in a situation where we can't 
don't guarantee ourselves monkey bombs again. But you've got so many points inside your game at this time, just go and hit the mystery box and get the monkey bombs back out again. It's going to take you quite a few flips, but the bonus is your secondary weapon is, of course, a war weapon. So you can always just get rid of that weapon, keep cycling until you get monkey bombs, and then buy back your second weapon off the wall and pack a punch it again. So once again, make your way over to the warden's house, get the numbers, go and type them into the number box, then make your way to Michigan Avenue. And if your portal is there, shock the portal. At this point, make your way over to the cafeteria and get one kill in that cafeteria. You will notice that a spirit will now be seen through your shield. Blast the spirit with a spirit blast and he'll now be in the map. All zombies at this point will go after this spirit. And the more hits he takes from the zombies, the redder he will get. And when he's fully red, he will die and you have failed the step. So your job at this point is to get the zombies away from the spirit. So throw monkey bombs. Every time one blows up, throw another one. After that one blows up, throw another one. And that is your three monkey bombs that you've thrown. By this point, he should be nearly at the library. At this point, use your magma gat. All the zombies will go after the magma gat instead of going after that spirit. And then finally, when the spirit is near the hellhound location, which you need to fill up for your hell's retriever, a warden will spawn in. To kill this Brutus very easily, just pull out your specialist, which is of course the katana, and kill all the zombies around the spirit, kill the warden, and finally get that spirit to go down into the portal. Once the spirit reaches the portal, you will see an orb drop. Pick up that orb and you have completed all of the challenges. Now that you've completed all of the challenges, make your way back to the spawn location of Blood of the Dead. Place all of the orbs that you picked up onto this map right here. And then once you've done that, make your way back to the warden's house. Once you're inside of there, go over to the electric chair and interact with the body on there. You'll notice that the summoning key will now get placed inside of the chest of that skeleton. Stand near the skeleton. Electrical beams will come off that summoning key and attach to you. Just stay there for long enough and then it will start a cutscene with the warden. You'll be locked in a cell and at this point you just need to watch the cutscene. I'm not going to spoil the entire thing inside of here for you, but just watch it. You can't be hurt in this cutscene either, so just enjoy it. After this, the seagull will spawn in once again into the map. He will shock the electrical box and let you escape the cell. Grab yourself a new spirit shield and there's also a bag here as well that you guys can pick up the weapons from that you were using but i completely forgot to do this inside of my game so you can't see footage of it unfortunately but you can get all your weapons back but i'm showing you right now that even without weapons i was able to get through all the way back to the spawn location so just follow the bird every warden that's in your path the bird will kill and just keep on walking over the catwalk to the new spawn location outside the new spawn location the bird will interact with this warden right here and he will kill the warden if you did the same thing as me and forgot your weapons in the bag back there, the warden will drop the weapons for you after he dies. He will also drop another orb. Pick up that orb, you've now got your weapons, and at this point, you need to get boss fight ready. So make sure you've got all your perks, make sure you have got full ammo in both your weapons, and make sure you've got a full spirit shield with four blasts. Make your way over to the map and place down that orb on the map. At this point, a new door will spawn to the right of you. Go up that door, go over to the garage door, and then hold the interact button on that garage door, where you will now be spawned into the boss fight. The boss fight is super, super easy. So if you made it up to this bit, you are guaranteed a win. So when you're inside of this boss fight, the first thing to do is just make sure that you've got spirit shield blasts. As long as you've got blasts, you're good to go. Kill absolutely everything in sight. And once you kill everything, you'll get a max ammo and a carbon to spawn in and a Brutus will spawn in on top of this rock. Look above the Brutus's head where you'll see three red orbs. Shoot the red orbs and then turn around and use a spirit blast on top of this machine. Once you've done that, the second step will start which will be exactly the same. Kill all the things inside of the map. You'll get another max ammo and another carpenter. Another warden will spawn in, shoot his red orbs, and then spirit blast the machine once again. After that spirit blast, if you are not playing as Rick Tuffin, a bot will spawn in and go and make his way into this chair. But if you are playing as Rick Tuffin, then you can make your way over to the chair yourself. After you've done this, a cutscene will start to play and then it will spawn you back inside of the spawn area. Make your way back up the stairs, enter the boss fight once again, where you will finally get the final cutscene to Blood of the Dead, and you have completely finished the whole Blood of the Dead Easter egg on Solo. Big shout out to you guys for watching this. Thank you so, so much. And as you guys can see inside of my gameplay, I managed to do this whole thing by following my own guide without going down once. So you guys can do it too. If you guys enjoyed this video at all, make sure you absolutely smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video or the next live stream. Thank you for watching and peace out.